Hi friends, today we'll be talking about the nucleotide biosynthesis. Nucleotides, we all know, are the precursors for the cellular DNA and RNA. They are also a part, essential part of the chemical energy, like we all are aware with ATP. To some extent, some energy is also provided by GTP. They are a part of various cofactors like NAD, FAD, S-adenosylmethionine and coenzyme A. They are also a part of activated biosynthetic intermediates like UDP glucose, CDP diacylglycerol. They also form the cell's second messenger like your cyclic AMP, cyclic GMP. As far as the synthesis of these nucleotides is concerned, there are basically two pathways in which this is accomplished. The first is called as the de novo pathway and the second is called as the salvage pathway. The de novo pathway, it starts from its basic metabolic precursors like the amino acids, the PRPP, the carbon dioxide and the ammonia. Whereas the salvage pathway, it starts from the nucleic acid breakdown products like the nucleosides, the nitrogen bases. So basically, the talking about the de novo pathway, in this particular pathway, the entire uh, series of steps is similar in all organisms. One may expect that these nitrogen bases like adenine, guanine, they may be the intermediates in the de novo pathway. Like the ring might be synthesized first and then attached to the ribose sugar. But in reality, it is not so. The de novo pathway does not show these nitrogen bases, free nitrogen bases as the intermediates. If you look at the purine biosynthesis, the purine ring is synthesized with one or few atoms at a time attached sequentially while still it is being attached to the ribose phosphate. As far as pyrimidine synthesis is concerned, you'll find that there is first the synthesis of a six-membered ring called as orotate which is then attached to ribose phosphate and later on the common pyrimidine nucleotides they are formed. If you talk about salvage pathways, then yes, in salvage pathways, you may find free nitrogen bases as their intermediates. Some of the precursors, they show a common appearance in the de novo synthesis of either purine or pyrimidine nucleotide biosynthesis. One of them is PRPP. PRPP provides the ribose which remains intact throughout the biosynthetic pathway of these nucleotides. The other, like amino acids, they play a major role in the synthesis of these nucleotides. If you talk about purine nucleotides, glycine plays a major role. If you talk about pyrimidine nucleotides, aspartate, it plays a major role. Glutamine, throughout the pathway, it serves as a donor of nitrogen in around 5 steps in the de novo synthesis of these nucleotides. Aspartate, it serves as a donor of amino group twice during the purine nucleotide biosynthesis in the de novo pathway. Now talking about the de novo uh, kind of pathways, there are two other features which require a special mention. Like especially in the purine nucleotide biosynthesis by the de novo pathway, most of the enzymes they are quite large and they are the multi-enzyme complexes. And the second important thing is that the concentration of these, the cellular pool of these nucleotides is very less. Even sometimes 1% or less these nucleotides they are present than the cell's requirement. So this assumes that the synthesis of this nucleotide is continuously on in a particular cell so as to supply the nucleotides for the synthesis of DNA for replication of DNA. Probably that is the reason that the agents which inhibit the biosynthesis of these nucleotides, they are finding a huge place in the modern medicine. Let us have a closer look at the de novo synthesis of the purine nucleotides. Now, the de novo synthesis of purine nucleotide, it basically starts with PRPP. When you talk about purine, we are talking about AMP and GMP, which contain adenine and guanine. The source of the various carbons and nitrogen atoms in this typical purine ring, it was worked out by John Buchanan with his isotopic uh, tracer experiments in the birds. The entire sequence of pathways, it was worked out by John Buchanan along with Robert Greenberg in 1950s. So let us have a closer look at the de novo synthesis of these purine nucleotides. In the first step, the amino group from glutamine is attached to the first carbon of PRPP forming a highly unstable 5-phospho-beta-D-ribosylamine. Next, the glycine after activation by hydrolysis of ATP adds three carbon atoms forming glycinamide ribonucleotide GAR. In the next step, 
the amino group of glycine is formulated by n10 formyl tetrahydrofolate forming formyl glycinamide ribonucleotide fgar nitrogen is then added from glutamine and with the hydrolysis of atp forms formyl glycinamide ribonucleotide fgam this undergoes dehydration and ring closure with atp hydrolysis forming 5 amino imidazole ribonucleotide air up till now we have three atoms of the six which are needed for the second ring of the purine in their place for the next three atoms the carboxyl group is added without biotin and from bicarbonate with atp hydrolysis to form n5 carboxy amino imidazole ribonucleotide that is n5cair the atoms are rearranged transferring carboxylate from the exocyclic amino group to the fourth position of the imidazole ring forming carboxy amino imidazole ribonucleotide cair the above two steps occur only in bacteria and fungi for higher eukaryotes the 5 air is directly carboxylated to cair in one step by air carboxylase next the amino group comes from aspartate the first amide bond is formed forming n succinyl 5 amino imidazole 4 carboxyamide ribonucleotide saicar then there is a removal of carbon skeleton of aspartate as fumarate to form 5 amino imidazole 4 carboxyamide ribonucleotide that is aicar the last carbon is now added by n10 formyl tetrahydrofolate to form n formyl amino imidazole 4 carboxyamide ribonucleotide faicar this is followed by the second ring closure by dehydration to form imp thus imp the first intermediate which has a complete purine ring is formed